able to start our session. So I'm Yuki from Hitachi, and uh, he's Daiki from Mitsubishi Electric. Uh, thank you for coming here. We are very happy to have you here. Uh, today, uh, we like to talk about our contribution about translating hybrid fabric documentation into Japanese. As you know, hybrid fabric is used all over the world. So many people are working uh, to achieve their innovation by using blockchain technologies. Some of them are non-English speakers, so they have some problems learning and reading English documents because they are non-native English speakers. To overcome those barriers, Harvard Fabric Documentation Working Group has been working on translation in 11 languages. Japanese Working Group is one of them. So today, we like to share our motivation, community development, translational tips, and challenges. OK? OK, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Sorry. And uh, okay. So uh, after this session, I hope uh, more people uh, will start the translation effort. So the first topic is motivation. Why we are here? You know, uh, Fabric is a great blockchain uh, platform, so many people use it. However, no. English speakers have a hard time keep up with frequent updated hybrid document. And there are two problem cases. Uh, the first case is translation tools uh, do not provide enough quality. Uh, there are famous translation tools like DeepL or Google Translate. Uh, those are great tools, but they cannot uh, understand the technical context. So. Automatically translated documents do not provide good quality. In other case, uh, some local engineers write blog posts in their local language, but those articles have become outdated soon because Fabric is updated frequently. For example, uh, some guys write how to deploy Fabric uh, V14, but uh, when Fabric V02 is released, those documents are outdated. In short, uh, no native English speakers have language barriers. To overcome those language barriers, uh, Hyperarch Fabric Documentation Working Group has started an uh, initiative to translate official documents into local languages. The goal is to enable more non English speakers to learn Hyperarch Fabric in their local languages. If the document is available in the local language, more people will adopt hybrid technologies. Under the working group, there are 11 language teams. Each local community has their own contributors, and they are working on translation. Japanese working group uh, is the fourth group. The documentation working group uh, helps start a new language translation they provide good, good guidelines and communication tools. So why we translate? I think we have three good reasons. The first motivation is learning blockchain technology. Uh, to translate the document, we need to understand the technology in detail. And the second reason is learning open source contribution. Contributing code is little difficult. So translation is a good starting point to understand the contribution process and tools. Lastly, we can connect with local community. Uh, we can get feedbacks from local guys, and we can connect with client companies in local community. These are the motivations. So the next topic is community development. This graph shows the overview of Japanese documentation working group. Uh, contributors uh, pick up an uh, English document, and then they translate it into Japanese, and they submit the 
dog to the GitHub repository and uh, maintenance check it and the document is released. Contributors follow contribution process and they use communication tools. These contribution process and communication tools are supported by hyperledger staff and uh, fabric documentation writing group. This uh, graph is the latest version. So when we started the team, and there is no uh, concrete process. So we faced a lot of problems. So we solved those problems and uh, we built community management like this one by Troy and Ella. So let me share some problems and solutions today. This is a history of our community building, uh, launching translation working group, develop contribution process, standardize translation rule, and recruit contributors. So, first topic is studying a translation team. Starting a translation, starting a translation team is building a new open source community. However, we do not have enough knowledge and experience for organizing a new community. We didn't know how to build a translation team, how to call for contributors. So our parent group, uh, that is Hybrid Fabric Documentation Working Group, helped us to organize a community. They provided us communication tool and contribution guides. And Linux Foundation Japan also helped us. They call for contributors in Japan because they have connection with local engineers. I am one of them. After starting the uh, team, uh, we had communication problem uh, because original members used emails to connect with each other. So communication was closed. So new members cannot access the communication logs. The other problem is English is required to ask questions at Fabric Dog I attend channel. And this is another communication barrier. So to solve the question, uh, we asked Hyperta staffs to create a new channel for Japanese dog working group. Thanks to their effort, now we have Wiki, Discord, and GitHub, Zoom uh, for Japanese dog working group. So we communicate in Japanese and uh, everyone can see the communication log. This is how we solve the communication problem. And the next topic is setting the milestone. Uh, you know, public has various active versions. Each version has documents. So which version is best for translation? To answer this question, uh, we set criteria. The criteria includes LTS version, number of users at blockchain services, and used for a long time. When we started the project, Fabric 2.2 was the latest LTS. However, most blockchain providers uh, use Fabric V1.4 for their cloud service. So readers uh, read articles in V1.4. Concerning the situation, V1.4 may be a good candidate, but uh, it may not be used for a long time. For the future, we decided to translate V2.2. It was a good decision because now most cloud providers uh, provide fabric uh, in 2.4, so it was a good decision. After setting the milestone, uh, we need to decide the priority of translation because there are many documents. So where do we start the translation? Uh, to start to answer this question, uh, Fabric Documentation Writing Group provided us priority guidelines. There are three levels. First topic is uh, documents for document contributors. Uh, they include uh, contribution guide and uh, grocery. Suggested next topics are uh, next priority. Uh, it has high priority documents for developers. 
For example, uh, key concepts getting started, tutorials are included. As a, as a topics for developers, uh, for example, operational guides and architecture reference are included. So we follow this guideline. Uh, so we first translate first topics and suggest the next topics. Now we are working on others. So the next step is developing contribution process. Contribution process is important to collaborate uh, efficiently. The first solution is contributor role. Japanese documentation working group uh, consists of engineers, fabric code contributors, and professional uh, translators. They had different level of experience about hybrid fabric. So we need to find a way to collaborate efficiently as one team. So we introduced three ways for contribution. Translator is a law who translate document. They don't need to have any requirement. Reviewer checks the translated, translated documents. They need to have previous experience about hybrid fabric. For example, fabric code contributor, fabric application developer, and a certification holder of a Linux Foundation. Tweakart support is a law who support using tools. So each contributor can pick up a law as they like. And the translation flow is also important for collaboration. So we uh, decided a trans tra translation flow. The requirement is simple contribution process because our community has beginners about open source contributions. So we looked for translation process in other open source community. The most famous one was Sphinx, but we gave up use following Sphinx because the contribution process is very complicated. And the fabric has multiple file formats like .md and .rst, but Sphinx only supported .rst. So we gave up using Sphinx. Instead, we introduced more simple translation flow. We just followed Fabric's GitHub contribution process. So each contributor picks up a file, they translate, and they just keep the document format. So it's, more, it's a simple, but I, we think it's effectively uh, working. And the uh, next topic is task management. So there are many uh, pages waiting translation. So uh, we need to collaborate as one team. So we use GitHub Kampa board. Uh, yeah, I know you are familiar with Kampa board. So uh, this image shows the Kampa board. And the left side is uh, to the tasks. And the next lane is a progress task. And the right lane is a uh, uh, task completed. So each contributor can pick up an issue, and we can share who is working on what tasks and what is left. So the next step is standardized translation rule. The purpose is to keep the quality and uh, productivity of translation. So we introduce translation rule book and terminology. So good documentation has common styles throughout all pages, but we didn't have common styles. So when a translator submits a pull request, reviewers had to compare with the previous documents. So contributors and reviewers had a long time uh, to check the styles. But uh, we wanted to focus on more content itself. So to solve the problem, we introduced a translation rulebook. A uh, translator uh, checked the documents uh, before submitting. And uh, reviewers uh, used the checklist uh, as a checking point. 
the rule book itself is updated anytime uh, because we may find some new problems and tips. This view shows the uh, examples of translation rule book. Uh, it includes terminology, Japanese style, no broken format, and a PR template. Uh, for example, uh, no broken format is used uh, to check if the documentation format uh, is not broken. For example, uh, the link to other documents may be broken after translation, so we need to check it. Another example is a PR template. Uh, we have a rule. One commit has only one page because we want to avoid the magic conflict, so we need to introduce this rule. And we also have a rule that as a tag JJP, because all language groups share only one JJP repository, so adding the tag is useful to pick up uh, only Japanese document issues. And uh, let me explain the terminology in detail. Uh, this is very important topics. Uh, when we studied the translation, uh, we used fabrics grocery to standardize terminology. It contains 47 pairs of English and Japanese words. However, it did not work enough. It, so the 47 words are not enough to cover uh, all words. So we initiated a special subgroup for creating a new terminology for Japanese. So we collected uh, terminologies from previously translated documents. So we found 463 terms. And uh, we categorized those words into four levels. Uh, level one is the highest priority. Uh, those words are fabric words, like order or endorser. Level two is blockchain words, like cryptocurrency. Level three is additional terms. And level four is common IT words. This terminology is uh, still in progress, so we merge those uh, articles on GitHub. This is an example of our terminology. The left lane is English, and the right lane is Japanese. So contributors check if they use the uh, uh, correct terminology before submitting a pull request. Creating terminology introduces another problem because we have over 400 uh, words here. So checking all words is heavy work. So how much the translators are reviews uh, for the terminology? Uh, to answer this question, we introduce a practical policy based on the levels. You know, so contributors must follow level one and two. It means that we need to follow public words and blockchain words. And changing level three and four is additional. So this is how we balance the quality and productivity of translation. And the last topic is recruiting new contributors. A year after the launch of the team, the number of active contributors decreased. It, also, it often happens at open source quality. So we need to have more new contributors. So we had meetups with Linux Foundation Japan. At the meetup, we introduced our translation activity and we shared the benefit of contribution and explained translation flow. After the meetup, uh, you remember, joined the meetup, thank uh, you. He is also uh, the new contributor. So we are very happy to have new members. And uh, this is the uh, current state of, of our team. Uh, we have completed translating 91% of document. We hope we will complete all tasks soon, probably by the end of this year. And the translated document is available here. So if you have time, please check it. And uh, 
there are many languages here, so please check it. Uh, we have French, Chinese, Spanish, and so on. Okay, so next topic is translation tips. So I pass my mic to Daiki. Go ahead. Thank you, Kondo-san. So from this session, uh, from this section, uh, I will explain uh, three translation rule, uh, tips. So at the first, it's the point of translation rule. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, we made a translation rule. Uh, so I introduced uh, uh, the point of uh, trans a translation tips and uh, uh, language, uh, so a solution for language specific manner. Uh, in Japanese, uh, there are two points of view, uh, end of a sentence and uh, punctuation mark. So th uh, both of them, there are many uh, types in Japanese, like uh, uh, punctuation mark, uh, maru, ten. And uh, sometimes uh, Japanese use dot and comma uh, depend on their uh, documents like thesis, it's actually uh, up to people. So we uh, put a uh, solution for language specific manner to our translation rule. And uh, another thing uh, uh, is a, prom a permutation to working members. And uh, you know, uh, there uh, that's the uh, uh, important thing to or uh, use uh, translation route by uh, working members continually. So we tried many things like share by wiki and put to uh, review process like that. So next is a sentence not to be translated. Uh, sometimes uh, you uh, sometimes it's better to not be translated to uh, local language because sometimes you have a technical problem or uh, contents. Uh, and uh, for example, we have a technical problem when we uh, translate link uh, sentence. We couldn't uh, go to jump uh, go ju uh, jump to our URL pages, so. We guess it's a language specific problem. So, uh, b because Japanese is not a Latin language. So, we decided that a uh, link sentence is not to translate it in, uh, into Japanese. And uh, after that, we uh, put uh, them to a uh, translation rule. You know, it's a so important thing. So last, it's, uh, uh, it's for review, uh, viewer uh, to understand easily. You know, Japanese is so uh, complicated uh, sentence uh, because a conclusion sentence is last. Uh, for example, uh, in terms of grammar, Japanese, uh, no, English is uh, subject and verb and object while Japanese is uh, subject, object, and uh, verb. So that's why Japanese is so com uh, complicated. So, <coughs> for example, uh, you translate uh, this example some, uh, sentence by uh, machine translation. You get left side uh, sentence. So re red line is a uh, conclusion sentence. So by machine translation, it's uh, uh, conclusion sentence is uh, separated. So we endeavor to try to uh, make sentence shorter and uh, conclusion first. Maybe it's very easy to understand. So next, uh, challenges for our work better. First, uh, call for more contributors. 
So actually, we have only seven active members. So uh, to activate our working group, uh, we have to uh, share, uh, recruit more contributors. So we try to to uh, do something like these uh, things. Second, catch up to next LTS version. Uh, we know that uh, the next uh, LTS version will be released soon. So we have to uh, think about how to get new release version into documentation. Third, ev evaluation for Japanese documents. So we know, uh, we want to know how useful, for, uh, how useful Japanese documentation is. So we uh, guess, uh, we think that uh, we use metrics for page viewers tool, uh, another, uh, any kinds of tool. But you know, uh, you, uh, we have uh, some uh, ideas, but we do not have a specific plan. So actually, we would like to di uh, discuss with you. So last conclusion. Uh, we showed four things. Uh, motivation. We want to remove the barrier for no English speaker to understand hyperledger fabric technology. And th through uh, documentation activity, we can understand hyperledger fabric deeply. Community development. So we tried many, many things to build develop and uh, improve constantly for our work better. Uh, uh, translation tips, uh, we sh uh, showed uh, f f three translation tips for spec uh, solution uh, specific problems. So last challenges, uh, we will try to three things for our work better. You know, uh, our work activity is still developing. So thank you so much for listening, and thank, uh, special thanks for Linux Foundation staffs, uh, Fabric Documentation Working Group, and uh, thank you for uh, everything, uh, Japanese Documentation Working Group uh, members. Uh, Tsujita-san, uh, Shimosawa-san, Sato-san, uh, Uchiyama-san, uh, Maikawa-san. Thank you so much. So thank you for listening. So if you have any queries, please let me know. Regarding another language, uh, actually, do you know it? The community? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, contribution process is very important for collaboration. So because um, if we work on translation by only one person, it's very hard work. So collaborating with other people are very good uh, ways to translation. So to work efficiently with other guys, uh, contributions is uh, very important. So public documentation working group uh, provided us good uh, baseline, but uh, each language has different situation. So I think it's a good idea to improve the, those basic guidelines to fit uh, their own language. For example, Japanese team introduced a uh, terminology for Japanese because English and Japanese don't uh, fit one to one. So we need to uh, decide uh, the appropriate words for uh, Japanese. So yeah, I think creating the contribution process is important for as a language community too. You're welcome. Go ahead. Google Translate, have you tried other um, 
Yeah, we, we also tried uh, Google Translate and DeepL. Yeah, of, of course, uh, they uh, provide translation documents, but uh, they cannot understand the technical context for blockchain or hyperledger fabric. So sometimes they uh, display weird translation. <laughs> so yeah, we need to uh, translate by ourselves to provide good quality documentation for readers. One more question. Yeah. Uh, I understand uh, Japanese are very particular on uh, details and documentation. So. Uh, is it okay to ask you to express your personal opinion about quality of the public documentation? <laughs> I understand that's a tricky question. You don't need to answer if it's kind of you don't want to ask the same thing. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a good, good question. So uh, I think uh, fabric contributors uh, provide good documentation because it's very well organized. So they provide uh, the getting started, tutorials, the concept, and the reference architecture. So uh, we can check the document uh, based on our levels. So beginners can use tutorials and getting started. And uh, if an operator who are working on production level, they can read the reference architecture or operational guides. So I think the documentation is very organized. And uh, yeah, of course, sometimes I cannot understand some of them. But uh, yeah, overall, I think public provides good quality of documentation. Does it make sense? It does make sense, yes. But that's interesting. Uh, does it fit your personal opinion about the quality of documentation as a Japanese industry, I would say? I'm, I'm sorry? Uh, I understand that's a good documentation, but does it fit your expectations as a uh, Japanese engineer? Are you satisfied with the documentation, or you would like to have more details? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know, yeah, in Japanese culture, uh, engineers, customers want to good quality of documentation, but uh, this is an open source community, so. If you want to improve the quality of documentation, we can contribute. So, yeah, I think it's a challenge, but uh, our next step is to contribute to fabric documentation itself. So, after completing the translation, yeah, we can uh, propose some improvements for fabric documentation itself. So, yeah, I think it's a good contribution from our side. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Um, one more generic question, I'm sorry. Uh, I have questions because we work in Japan a lot uh, for over 20 years. I kind of understand a little bit of culture. So what is the main issue uh, introducing more like a hyperledger technology or blockchain in Japan? So it's more generic question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. You have any idea? Uh, okay, uh, let me go first. So, let's think it's similar in other languages. You know, uh, we have many proof of concepts, but uh, we have only a full production level services. So, I don't know, what, what is the um, root cause of its issues, but uh, it's hard for us to go to the production level, so it's a uh, common issue in Japanese blockchain world. You're welcome. Thank you. Have any comments? Uh, actually, uh, in terms of uh, technological uh, documentation in English, uh, I think it's not enough to. Uh, Build uh, like prototype uh, hyperledger system. So it, actually, it's not a technological problem, but uh, you know, in, uh, English uh, documentation is also important. I think. So I uh, I want to I want 
uh, uh, I want uh, I want to to I, I want the uh, community to uh, in, in, uh, improve uh, documentation uh, contents more more deeply. Thank you so much. For this, do you believe we should have standards uh, that for all the documentation should follow so that it's easy to translate it to different languages? Just like we talk about some standards, shall we have those standards when we make documentation in English? So it's much easier for you guys to translate it to like, any other language also. Say it, yeah, I said it's a good suggestion. So I think uh, we can share sub levels so yeah we can standardize at, su at the sub levels because contextual process and terminology are common problems in other languages so i think it's a, it's a good idea to share knowledge between different language groups and uh, they can also customize uh, some points uh, to improve their own language specific problem Thank you for your advice. So uh, I have some experience with you know digitizing the documents. Like uh, you know, I've been working with some organizations who have like 40, 50, or even 70 years of old documents which are still relevant for them, and they wanted to digitize them. So as part of it, you know, we faced many challenges. But one thing that we understood was if you know, uh, like carrying on the same point, if the documentation when it was done, it followed certain principles. Like, you know, this is the format, this is the font, this is how paragraph to start. If it followed those things, you know, uh, then, it, then the job was very easier, right? The same job that, you know, would take someone a year could be reduced very well to a month, right? 12 times or, you know, 15 times you can reduce that if, you know, the documentation was done in a particular format, right? So that, you know, you can build tools and, you know, reusable components which can actually scan through and which can actually read through and find out, okay, you know, these are the punctuation marks, these are the sum of the headings, right? So all those things it could, you know, figure out. So that was, you know, my experience from, you know, doing the similar exercise. Mm -hmm. And we did about, you know, 40, uh, like, 4 million pages. We converted 4 million pages of different, you know, books and different formats into a, you know, very specialized XML format. Okay, yeah, thank you for sharing your experience. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for coming here. Yeah, we got very good feedback from you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you so much.